What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today I've got another Swatcher review for you. So today we are talking about the new fall 2023 collection from Orly, which is called Plot Twist. Now, if you haven't heard of Orly before, they are a mainstream salon nail polish brand and all of their polishes are vegan, meaning they do not use any animal derived ingredients. They're cruelty free, meaning they do not test their products on animals. And they're also listed as being formulated without harmful ingredients. So like I said, they just released their fall 2023 collection we've got six brand new nail polishes and they're all in this mystery sort of theme, which is actually very appropriate because I just started reading a new mystery novel yesterday. I'm feeling very into the theme right now. But yeah, as far as the polishes go, the colors are a little bit unexpected for me. We've got mostly creams, one shimmer, but let me just go ahead and show you the swatches. Then we can talk a little bit more about pricing, availability, my thoughts on them, all that good stuff. So roll the swatch footage. As with all of my swatch review videos, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches, just to protect my natural nail and prevent any stains. Today I'm using the Orly Bonder base coat. So we'll start off with the shade that I'm actually wearing in the intro and outro of this video. This is Shaky Alibi and it's this really gorgeous beigey nude color and it has a super strong cool pink undertone to it and you can see just on that first coat it was so opaque. I feel like I normally expect this sort of shade to be a three coater but it was actually almost a one coater. I did need two for full coverage but the shade is absolutely stunning. And I feel like this type of cool undertone, especially in a neutral shade, just screams fall to me. And I love wearing it for that season. I actually happen to be super warm toned with a very yellowy undertone. And I think it looks great on me. So don't ever feel like you can't wear a certain color because of your undertones. You can really make it work. Next up, we have the shade Act of Folly. And this one is so interesting. I don't even know how to describe this color. I kind of want to call it a mustard shade, but there's definitely a little hint of like a green undertone to it. It's almost like a, a yellowy chartreuse kind of shade. I don't know, but it's really gorgeous. This is definitely what I would call an ugly pretty color and I have a feeling that people are either going to love it or hate it, but personally I love it. I think it shows a little bit more yellowy on me just because like I said, I am pretty yellow undertoned and I think it kind of brings that out, but the formula is really gorgeous. The color, I don't know, it's just so interesting and fun. Moving on, we have the shade in the conservatory and this one is a really interesting interesting brick reddish orange kind of color. I feel like for whatever reason, my camera was pulling it to be a little bit more pinky toned than it is. I would say it definitely leans more on the orangey side, but the formula was really amazing. Super incredible opacity. It pretty much gave me full coverage on the first coat, but I did need a second just to give it that nice full manicure look. A really gorgeous shade. I will say this one did come with an incredibly wonky brush for me, but if that ever happens, you can always just reach out to the brand. And I would say most brands will will send you a replacement brush for free. I've never heard of a brand that didn't do it. <laughs> Moving on, we have the shade Don't Be Suspicious, and this one is another neutral. It is a gorgeous medium brown color, and I think Orly does brown shades like this so well, especially their breathable line. They have so fleshed out, but personally, I love this type of shade where it's really rich. It has almost like this reddish undertone to it. I just think it suits my skin tone so well. The opacity was amazing. I feel like I'm kind of going through through a neutral phase right now where all I want to wear on my nails are shades of beige and brown. So I don't know, maybe that's going to be my fall thing. <laughs> Next, we have the shade Unraveling Story, and this one on its own, I want to call it a gray cream, but when I look at it next to all of these warmer shades from the collection, it definitely gives off a blue undertone, and I think you'll see it even more when we show the next color, but it's another amazing one. It's this really deep shade, definitely has that sort of bluish undertone to it. The opacity was amazing in two coats. It was super smooth, and I gotta say, all of these polishes are so shiny. I always recommend wearing top coat, but but even without it, they are incredibly shiny. And last but not least, we have the shade Endless Night, and this one is the only shimmer of the collection. It's a little bit of a metallic foil sort of formula. And again, it's this sort of grayish blue color. Definitely leans a little bit more on the blue side. And when I saw it next to Unraveling Story, which is the grayish blue that I just reviewed, I feel like it looked even more blue toned. So those two shades match very well together. I feel like that would be very cool monochromatic nail art, but I just love a foil shade like this, especially with a little bit of color to it. The formula was so smooth and easy. There's a tiny bit of like a brush strokiness to it, but it was really easy to apply smoothly. So here are all of the shades together. And I have to say, looking at the color story, I really love it. I think if I saw these polishes individually, I would think that they're just kind of 
basic colors, but looking at them together, I just feel so inspired. Like it makes me want to do Skittle nail art. I love this combination of these different colored undertones going on. Like we have some really warm shades, some really cool shades, but they all still feel like they flow together very nicely. And I don't know, I just think it's an interesting mix of colors to put together. So yeah, those are the polishes and overall I really enjoyed them. I think Orly is really so incredible at creating themes and color stories. It's something that they always seem to excel at and I also really appreciate that they're never afraid to do weird sort of colors, the kind that I like to call ugly pretty, because even though there are definitely some haters in terms of ugly pretty nail polishes, especially when they're in this color range, I think a lot of people really do enjoy those colors. So I appreciate that a mainstream brand isn't afraid to do them. I also feel like between this collection and their summer 2023 collection, they're bringing this different sort of energy. I almost want to call it like a masculine energy to the color story. And that's not to say that nail polish is gendered in any way or that these colors are boyish, but I do think in a design sense, there are certain colors and color stories that kind of have this masculine sort of energy. And I feel like Orly's kind of bringing that, which I really appreciate. I don't know if that makes sense. I feel like I'm not articulating this well, but I feel like there's just this interesting, like artistic masculine energy to it. I don't know. I'm just rambling at this point. But yeah, I just feel like the color story as a whole is a little bit unexpected, but it also works really well. The colors are super gorgeous and they also still fit within the fall sort of theming. So let's talk about the bottle and the price. I always like to mention Orly comes in an absolutely massive bottle. They are 18 milliliters, which is way bigger than industry standard. They do have a wide flat brush that has a rounded tip and they also have a rubberized cap, which makes opening them a lot easier. If you've ever used a nail polish and then gotten a little bit of mess on the neck of the bottle and then the next time you try to open it, it just felt nearly impossible. I feel like I've never had that issue with Orly because they have those rubber caps. So these polishes are available on the Orly website. They're retailing for $10.50 USD each. They're also usually available from retailers, so I will pop some links down below if you're interested in checking them out. But yeah, I'm curious to hear what everybody thinks of these. What do you think of the colors? What do you think of the color story and the theme? Which color is your favorite? Which color is your least favorite? Leave it all in the comments. We can chat about it. If you enjoy my swatch and review videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And now we are getting into the groove of the fall 2023 polishes, which I'm very excited about because this is my favorite time of year for nail polish. And of course, if you want to follow along my moving journey, because I did just recently move into a new place, you can check that out on my vlog channel. So I'll link that up in the cards. And of course, a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon and my Royal Astronomer, Amanda M, as well as my Cosmic Admirals, Rocket Man's daughter, Paola, Ken, and Rosie. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Amanda and Amanda wants to know, do you have a favorite birthday memory? Honestly, offhand, I can't think of something, which sounds bad. But honestly, like as much as I talk about my birthday, I feel like I do not like my birthday. And on the day of my birthday, I usually cry. I don't know what it is. I just feel like in general, there's so many expectations for who we're supposed to be by certain ages. And I try not to really think about that or, you know, let that kind of dictate the path of my life. But a lot of the time, I feel like it just becomes this huge reminder on my birthday, especially because you get all these calls from people that you maybe haven't even talked to since your last birthday and they want to know what you've accomplished in the last year and it just feels like a lot of pressure. It definitely gets to be a little bit overwhelming. So generally I do not like my birthday. I feel like my ideal birthday is always just like be in my pajamas and just hang out on the couch and be a blob or hang out with friends and pretend it's not my birthday. So yeah, that's it. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!